twenty twenty five in Kansas State. He's coming too or well, he's in the Keys camp, so only on that and huh. one in twenty five. So Johnson. Eleven, one, twenty five is coming? Yep. So That's not it. the others? Nope. Whenever you're ready. I get no rebounds. I get General to comments. Yeah, it's all yours. Um, first and foremost, I would just like to thank the good Lord uh, for this opportunity and the blessings that he's given us. And, um, you know, I want to thank my wife. Uh, she just puts up with so much. And, uh, and these young men across here, man, uh, we've asked a lot of them. And every time they've delivered. And uh, I'm so proud of them. So proud to represent Kansas State. I'm so proud to be a part of the community at Manhattan. And uh, I'm just blessed, man. I'm, I'm so blessed. OK, questions? Please raise your hand. Let us get the handheld mics to you. And let us know who you are and who you're with. First question, second row. N Nicole Auerbach, The Athletic. Uh, Jerome, congratulations. When you took over and you had two guys on your roster, did you think this was possible? Uh, I thought that we could be an NCAA tournament team. That, that was my goal. I, Keith and I went out to lunch one day, and I, you know, I just told him, I said, Keith, I'm going to do everything in my power uh, to put a team together that will get him a chance to get to the NCAA tournament. And he told me, he said, Coach, I don't care if we have five dudes, right? We're going to the tournament because Kimball Walker won a national championship with, I think it was like three freshmen and two sophomores, whatever it was. But he knew. Right? And I was like, man, with that kind of confidence, I got, we, it just made, inspired me to work harder and our staff to work harder. And so uh, he always believed it, and he helped me believe. <clears throat> Front row. He's got Rich and K-State Athletics. Mark East, you're going home, man. How's this feel? Uh, man, it still feels, you know, surreal. Uh, but I got to give all the honor and the glory to God himself, man. Um, man. I mean, I could have done it without my teammates and my coaching staff. Um, they, they put together a good game plan, and we believed in it. And I'm just happy we got the victory today. Third row. Ish, I feel like you haven't had a big shot like that since the game against Baylor. But to be able to step up in that moment at that time and knock one down at that moment, like, can you just take me through the emotions of that play? Uh, I mean, the whole time, the whole game, really, I was just uh, trying to do my part. And you, you, today, I felt like it was, you know, uh, front of the post and just trying to be physical and match the physicality of obviously uh, Oscar and stuff like that. But I, I knew there would come a time, especially when how we, we weren't shooting the ball that well. I knew there would come a time when I was gonna get an opportunity to uh, to make a shot, and I, I was just gotta make sure I was ready. And Keith found me, and I just let it go, no hesitation. So it's just. I didn't really think much of it until after I hit it, but I just just grateful Keith had trust in me to to pass that ball. For Coach Tang, first of all, guys, congratulations on the victory. With a guy like, you know, like Oscar Shibwe, dominant with the rebounds, they're getting so many second chance opportunities in a close game. How important is a number of just having eight turnovers in the game? You're still undefeated uh, when it comes to turnovers 11 or less. Yeah, uh, I mean, <laughs> they've heard it from me enough. We've sorted through it. And, you know, I mean, like we even, to start the half, we had, three quick turnovers, right? And, and I don't think we turned it over again the rest of the way. So it's huge. If we, we get shots up, uh, we're hard to beat. And as long as we don't give the other team the ball, and I mean, we defended today, right? Like, and we knew that Oscar was going to get his, and, but we had to control everybody else. Kaysan Wallace had an unbelievable game, you know, did a great job, but we felt we did a good job on the three-point shooters, and I think that was the difference in the game. Front row. 
Coach Tang, you always talk about big time players making big time plays and big time moments. And uh, Keontae, you know, was able to hit that three pointer at the end there. I'm curious if you could comment on that and then also on Marquise just kind of going off tonight. Dudes, <laughs> we got dudes. And that's, that's what it takes. Like, this is, I mean, people get all caught up in the coaching and all that stuff. It's dudes. You got to have players. And these dudes, they, they work, right? They put in the time. We, we talked about it before this game, right? We, 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 we've, uh, we, we're going to trust our work. And uh, we've won really good games against other really good teams in really tough environments before. So we were prepared for this. And I expected them to play great. And I, I, every time they shot it, I thought it was going in. And so uh, it's, it's just, I just, they believe in themselves, but they're just, they don't just do it just, um, it's not fake confidence, right? It's the work that they put in, the hours they spend in the gym and uh, all of them, you know? And I knew Ish was gonna make that shot because he wants to go to New York. Second row. Uh, so, Marquise, you, it, it, your coach mentioned Kemba. I know you've talked about him. He's been someone who you've looked up to for a really long time. In the second half, when you are really taking over the game and scoring a lot, like, what does that feel like to be in a Kemba Walker-esque moment? I mean, I was just in attack mode second half uh, because I seen how they were playing me. They were playing me for the pass uh, because I dropped a lot of dimes in the first half. So. I just figured that, you know, I try to look for my own shot um, a little bit more and be more aggressive. And I wanted to go to New York, so. <laughs> Front row. Brett Freelander, Saturday Road. This is uh, for uh, any of the players, but especially you. Um, you guys were 0 for 12 from three-point range in the first half and 5 for 9 in the second half. Other than going back to the locker room and resetting, was there anything that you guys did differently to bring about the change of, of, of accuracy there? Marquise. Uh, we, just, we just told each other. We, we stood positive in the locker room um, when things weren't falling. Uh, we just said that, you know, second half, we, we were going to start hitting some shots, and we did. Um, but it was, just, it was just nothing but positive vibes, you know, going into the locker room. Keontae? Um, I mean, piggyback what Keith said. I mean, we just went in the locker room just keeping the confidence. Um, we knew the shots was going to fall. Eventually, Coach Reen told me to keep shooting. I'm shooting. I mean, I haven't even got started yet. So Keith challenged me during the game. Um, he got on me, um, wanted me to shoot, and I just kept driving. And then the last shot, I mean, I shot it. Confidence, so that was it. <laughs> uh, just um, <clears throat> to add to what they said, you know, even though the shots weren't falling in the first half, our defense was where, where it needed to be. And we knew if we kept defending like we were, our shots were going to fall because in the first half, we got a lot of really good looks that we were all happy with, and we all got belief in each other. So we knew it was going to fall. Third row in front of me. Uh, Coach, after the game, you and Gene Taylor embraced in a pretty large hug. To be able to do this in your first year, go to the Sweet 16 in your first year as a head coach, um, emotionally, what's it like to share it with someone who brought you here and took a chance on you after so many years of trying to become a head coach? And, um, no, that, that, was, that was really cool. I actually, I watched Gene and Coach Kleiman hug after a win. I was watching on TV and they had like this hug and you could tell like there was this love and appreciation for each other with the hug. And I was like, Man, I, I'm gonna get a hug like that. <laughs> I am, I, I, I'm gonna get a hug like that because because I absolutely love him and I, I can't tell you like how much I appreciate it, like him taking a chance on me, you know. And the, yeah, yeah, word, words can't express it, man. But I, I wanted one of those hugs, and I'm thankful that I get to live life with this man. Back right, Wallace. Ish, Josh Graham, WSJS. If memory serves, the last time, your last game at Wake in this building, you were beaten at the buzzer. At the end, you were kind of standing at midcourt, a bit emotional. I saw you hug Randolph Childress as well. What were you feeling as you were going through that line of fans and it ended up with Coach Chill there? I mean, it's just a flood of, of happiness and emotions because, you know, it, it took a lot for all of us to get here, uh, from being picked last to all the workouts in the summer. And, and for me to have that moment, um, uh, it just it meant a lot because, uh, you know, it, it, you never know when you have another opportunity like this. And f for me to be able to play my role for this team and help this team and help us uh, get, accomplish our goals, it just was just, a, just so much uh, emotion that I just I couldn't contain other than crying. Second row. Uh, Jerome, on, on that inbounds play in the final minute when a bunch of guys were on the line, like, can you walk us through that? <laughs> no, because then the other team will know next time we have to use it. <laughs> 
<laughs> but but actually, it, it kind of came from Baylor, right? Yeah, but we like stole it from somebody else, and so yeah. But yes, yeah, we uh, we have our own. We actually call it um, we actually call it Mahomes for um, Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback for the Super Bowl champion, uh, Kansas City Chiefs. You know, that's probably left aisle. Uh, Mike DeCourse here from the Sporting News. This is from Marquise. Uh, I wanted to ask you, when you were sort of hustling around last summer trying to, you know, or last spring, I guess, uh, trying to keep the team together, trying to be an agent for, you know, a, 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 not maybe the wrong, wrong word, a, 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 a facilitator for your new yes. coach. Yes. Uh, I wanted to ask you whether you thought this was possible, just a good season. Did you have bigger dreams than this even? I mean, uh, I did have, you know, faith in that this team will be able to go to March Madness and do some special things. But I got to give a lot of credit to our athletic director, Gene Taylor, for, you know, trusting in Coach Tang, trusting in, you know, the text message I sent him. And, you know, I got to give a lot of credit to Coach Tang for establishing this coaching staff that we have um, now. Um, everybody, you know, plays a, a, a tremendous role you know, in the locker room and, and, and the reason, and that's the reason why we winning. So, I mean, I have faith, you know, that if I, if I get at least five players, I don't care who it is that, you know, we was going to make it to March and we'll do something special. Middle of the room. David Hale with ESPN. Marquise, uh, you mentioned Kemba and there's so many great stories of March Madness where guys who are very good become legendary. Has it dawned on you that you're like the 5'8 guy who just knocked off Kentucky and is going home to Madison Square Garden in New York and like what that story means on the bigger stage of things? Uh, it hasn't hit me just yet. Um, and I, I kind of don't want it to because I don't want to lose that hunger that I play with and that passion I play with. Um, but, you know, it's this is about my team. I mean, we accomplished this. I didn't accomplish, accomplish this by myself. Uh, everybody, you know, played huge for us. Um, the coaching staff did great. You know, I'm just proud of everybody, you know, in the locker room and behind the scenes. Second row to our right. Mitch Fortner came in radio for Marquise Noel. There was twice, there was one time you shot over Sheepway. There was another time you kind of scored through him going to the glass. Uh, can you take me through those couple of plays? And because uh, from my vantage point, it was, it was pretty nuts to see those plays. Um, like I said, I, I felt like I could get downhill. Um, versus them because of the way Shebe plays um, pick and roll defense. But uh, I don't think we mentioned how good Kentucky really was today. You know, just offensive rebounding, getting second chance points. I mean, Shebe, you know, had a double double. You know, Kaysen played good. So, you know, they, they put up a fight, you know, and it was a 40 minute battle. Um, but we just ran to the fight. And, you know, we, we were the most toughest team out there. Last question, front row. Keontae, uh, you had talked yesterday about goals with this team. I'm just curious how, how it feels to be one step closer. Um, I mean, it's really a blessing just just being out here. Um, I got emotional uh, with my dad. Just everything I've been through is just – I always lost in the second round, so I finally just got past that and made it to the Sweet 16. And just grateful for having the right guys around me. Um, Keith challenged me during the game and just – is you're knocking down the big three. I mean, it's just show how much we love each other and just how much freedom we have and confidence we have in each other. Okay, thanks, guys. Good luck next week. Appreciate it. Thank you. Randolph was out there. Yeah, I see one of those. Only the best coach. It was great work with you guys. Yeah.